Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about getting your first job in data science. If you are learning data science or interested in learning data science, there could be some questions in your mind about getting your first job in the field of data science. Getting your first job can be really tricky and hence in this video, I'm going to provide you a step-by-step -step approach that can help in increasing your chances of getting hired as a data scientist. The steps that I am going to talk about in this particular video could be applicable for anyone who is looking forward into getting started uh, with a data science career. But the time that would be spent in each of these steps could be very different from individual to individual, depending upon how much knowledge that you already have. So for someone who have already learned a, quite a bit of data science concepts, maybe they need not spend much time on each of these steps. But if you are really new, maybe you might require uh, some more additional hard work or some more additional time at, in each of these steps in order to ensure that you are able to land a job in data science. The first step is you need to get to know about the tools that are commonly used by data scientists in their day-to-day -day job. How can you get to know about the tools that are commonly used by data scientists? Should you go and check their LinkedIn profile? Or should you reach out to data scientists, ask about what type of tools, what type of technologies they are using on their job? No, you need not do that. This is already been collected as part of Cattle Machine Learning and Data Science Survey. So Cattle Machine Learning and Data Science Survey is something that is very popular among data scientists. And uh, I guess this is like maybe fifth year or five plus year they have been successfully collecting all these data from the data scientists to better understand about what these people are doing on their job and hence this is a good source for you to understand about people who are already working as data scientists to understand about what type of tools what type of algorithms and what type of environment they are working the 2020 machine learning and data science survey of cattle had about more than 20,000 respondents and about 80 percent of them have said that they use python primarily on, on their job after Python, the second programming language that is commonly being used is R, which is at 21%. And the other la programming languages that are commonly used are C, C++, Java. Apart from this, SQL is also being commonly used. About 40% of respondents have claimed that they have used SQL in their day-to-day -day job. So, so this provides you an good information about what's happening. So what type of uh, tools are being used by the data scientist. So based on these survey, these, these data points, I would say that you need to pick up one programming language. It could be any programming language, Python, R, C, C++, Java, or any other language. And apart from that, you need to also learn SQL because we see that about 40% of people are using SQL, most likely because the data is stored in a relational database or in some storage and requires the SQL skills you know, for, for you to access those data. And apart from these two, I would also say that it would be better for you to have some knowledge about dashboarding tools such as Tableau or Power BI that will increase your chances of getting hired as a data scientist. So having familiar with these tools is one point. But the most important thing is you need to ensure that your resume or CV is reflecting what you know. In most cases, what happens is there would be extremely large number of applicants and many organizations use filtering conditions in order to filter the profile of the potential candidates. So if your resume or CV is not reflecting what you know, what tools you know, then there is a high probability that you are not being selected. So if you have issues of getting shortlisted into an, any particular job profile, you need to ensure that your CV is having all those keywords so that it is not falling out during the initial stages where there is no human who is actually making the filtration, but it is an algorithm that filters the resumes. So ensure that your CV reflects exactly what you know and uh, ensure that you have all these keywords such as like the programming languages like Python R or whatever be the programming language also uh, ensure that you have the keywords such as SQL, dashboarding tools uh, in, into your CV. The step two is to understand the basic concepts, basic concepts in data science. So it is really important that you have basic programming language in whatever language that you are choosing. You have basic skills about the libraries and packages that are available in the programming language that you are using. For example, if I take Python, 
I need to ensure that uh, I am aware of uh, libraries such as pandas, various visualization libraries, numpy, and so on. So to ensure that you are capable enough to do the data analysis and you are capable enough to build a model. Also, you need to have enough knowledge about handling common data quality issues. For example, the data set that you are working on could have extremely uh, a large number of missing values or it could have many outliers. You need to ensure that you know about techniques that can be used to treat all these data quality issues. The reason is in a real life scenario, the data set that you will be working on will not be perfect. It will have a lot of issues. And hence, knowing about the right method to treat the issues is really helpful when it comes to the data science job. So you need to ensure that you have some amount of knowledge about handling the popular or frequent data quality issues such as missing data, outliers, and so on. The next basic concept is statistics. Statistics is a very wide concept. So there are people who do, uh, who do sp spend years doing PhD in uh, niche statistics topics. And uh, you need not be aware of all the statistics topics. You would not have enough time to understand about all those topics. But what is required is you need to understand about the basic concepts that will be frequently used in the data science uh, job. For example, if I, take, uh, if I take a particular data set, you should have enough knowledge about the descriptive statistics to understand about the data set that we already that we have, like how the data has been distributed. If we want to select and sample from a larger data set, you need to know about the various sampling techniques, how to ensure that the sample that we are picking up will reflect the actual population. The other statistics techniques are such as uh, like relationship-based techniques, such as uh, correlation, covariance, and causal. Uh, because when we do the data analysis, we will be trying to understand the relationship between different variables and these measures will be very helpful for us to understand how the different variables are be behaving together. And the other statistics concepts that will be very helpful are the hypothesis testing. So this is very commonly uh, used in the data science job. For example, let's say you are working for a uh, product company. So your company wants to launch a particular feature. So what happens usually before launching the feature is, so you need to test these features on a smaller sample to see if this particular feature is helping in your objective. For example, if you want to build a feature to improve the retention, you need to check if this particular new feature is actually helping you in increasing the retention of your customers. So what you do is you select a small sample audience and you launch this particular new feature to the small audience and see how their audience are responding. So based on the feedback that you receive from this smaller audience, you will decide whether this feature needs to be launched to the larger audience or not. So in order to make this decision of whether you need to, whether you can launch this particular feature for the larger audience or not, you need to do the hypothesis testing. So you need to, you, you would have two samples and you will be comparing the data of these two samples to check if this particular new feature is improving the performance or not whether this particular new feature is improving the customer retention or not. If the objective of this feature is to reduce churn, you need to check if this particular new feature is it doing enough to reduce the churn or not. So by doing all these, for doing all these, you need to have some, you need to do the hypothesis testing. So you need to have enough knowledge about the various statistics uh, tests, such as F-test, T-test, Tristwire test, and all what. And then you need to know in which type of scenarios, what type of test can be used for you to ensure that you are able to, you are able to meet your objective, and hence I would say uh, that you need to have enough top uh, enough knowledge about statistics to do an basic analysis about the data, to understand relationship between different variables that have been provided, also to do uh, various simple hypothesis test and make some decisions. And the last concept is data visualization. So data visualization is really key for you to understand uh, the data set better, as well as to communicate some of these insights to the various stakeholders. So in order to know enough visualization, I would say that you need to know about the various libraries. And uh, if you have knowledge about the dashboarding tools, that can be very helpful for you to meet these criteria. So that's about the step two. So, so far we have covered step one and step two. In step one, what we have done is we have, we have understood what is the tools that are commonly used by data scientists on their job. And in step two, 
we are ensuring that we have sufficient knowledge about the basic concepts in data science. So while working on this step two, while building your basic concepts, basic knowledge about data science, what you can do is you can parallelly start focusing on building a portfolio. Having a portfolio is really important when it comes to job interview or getting shortlisted for a data science position because as I said, when you have extremely large number of applicants, what happens is at this first step, the algorithm will filter out all the resumes. So if your resume is not having the keywords, there is very high chances that you will be eliminated. The step two would be to filter out people based on their resume. So what happens is, so let's say there are about 200 applicants for a couple of data science job positions. So the first filtration would be based on the algorithm. So let's say the algorithm is looking for various keywords and able to filter about 50 people. So still the 50 people is quite high. You can't have interviews or you can't talk to all these 50 people because every one of us have time constraint. So what happens here is then these people, uh, especially the recruiters would be relying on your resume, the contents that you have provided in your resume in order to shortlist your profile. So if your profile is having your portfolio, for example, it has, it has linked to your GitHub repository, if it has linked to your blog, so then there is a higher chance of your profile is getting shortlisted in this particular stage. Because when they have two resumes and if there is one person who has a proof for what they know, for example, if they are able to add the, their blots, their data repository with various uh, scripts in it, so there is a higher chance that those people will be, will be shortlisted uh, for the next stages. So I would say that it is really important for you to build or work on the portfolio. So how to build a portfolio? There are a few platforms that can help in building your portfolio. One is Cattle. Cattle launches a lot of data science competition. So by participating in a lot of Cattle competitions, what happens is uh, you have a good learning. You get to meet uh, like-minded people who are also working in data science or who are also trying to get a job in data science. There is a good recognition among the industry because Cattle is a platform that is very popular among the data scientists. And you also get to contribute towards new data sets, new notebooks that can be used for analysis and can be helpful for others. So by, by participating in these competitions, by contributing to these notebooks or by contributing to the data set, what happens is you are creating a portfolio for yourself. So the second one is Git repository. So when you are learning the data science concepts, whatever script that you are going to use while learning the concept data science concepts, what you can do is you can upload or push these scripts into your Git repository to ensure that uh, you keep track of all your learnings and uh, it can also be very helpful for the potential recruiter to see what you have learned so far and what type of hobby project that you are uh, that you have done so you can upload the scripts of your hobby projects and uh, this can be used as a portfolio which can be shared with the potential recruiter the next method of uh, building a portfolio could be blots so by, by putting your thoughts into writing, what happens is uh, there will be a lot of questions that you will try to answer. By answering all these questions, uh, you are understanding about the concepts get a better shape. These writings and blogs can be used as a as, as uh, portfolio which can be shared with the potential recruiter and can be very helpful in increasing your chances of getting hired. So we saw in step three about uh, building a good portfolio and about platforms such as Tit, Tadl and, uh, and blogs that can be used in, in order to build your portfolio. The next step is getting connected to a lot of people. So the most important step is ensuring that you have a good network. Many organizations have a preference for profiles that have been referred by the internal candidates. So what you need to do is you need to ensure that you have a good network with people who are working in the data science. So how to build your network? You need not worry about sending in like LinkedIn requests to new people or people who you haven't met. What you need to do is you need to ensure that your profile is up to date and your interest in data science are reflecting in your profile and details such as your educational background, the job that you are working on and your profile picture and your profile basic profile details are being correct to ensure that all these people to whom you are sending this, uh, sending the connection request don't consider you as an uh, a scam account. The other method to increase your professional network is uh, meetups. So there, would, there are lots of meetups, uh, especially data science meetups across 
at various cities so no matter wherever you are uh, living right now you can check for meetups that is happening in data science around your city or closer to you and you can try to participate in all those meetups so by participating in these meetups what happens is you get to meet a lot of new people and uh, and the advantage of meetups is they offer uh, networking like before and after the event so there will be a small amount of time before and after the event where you can get to talk to the other people who have come there so that will be a good chance for you to increase your professional network get to meet new people you also get to see some very interesting presentation and uh, i would strongly recommend meetup could be a great place for you to meet a lot of new people personally for me meetup uh, had a greater role in expanding my network i got to meet a lot of very good friends that i have now through various meetups so the final step is looking out for opportunities and asking for references so now you have built enough knowledge about the data science and you have built your professional network you have built a portfolio so the last step is searching for the opportunity and checking if there are any references that who can help you in referring to those job positions so how do you ensure that you are able to keep track of all the opportunities so if you are very keen about data science role in a particular organization then i would suggest that you create alert in linkedin so that you don't miss if any data science opportunity comes from your dream companies also what you do is you need to keep an eye for all these companies proactively reach out for people who are working there uh, get connected to them if you get a chance meet for a coffee catch up talk to them understand about what they are working on uh, get to know if there is any openings that could come up in their company and if there are anything that is coming up ask those people who are working in those organization to see if they can refer you in those job positions so if you know someone and if they are also aware of your skill set and your knowledge i i hope i guess that they will be very much glad in referring you to the open job positions and always ensure that you apply with a travel letter so you have a travel letter uh, with details about uh, what you are doing what is your background ensure that your travel letter is not exactly same as what has been provided in your resume so the travel letter needs to provide some kind of background about what you are doing and why you are looking for this particular job opportunity what makes you what made you apply for this particular job opportunity this is really important uh, because like uh, you are going to get into the field of data science so you need to have really a convincing response to ensure that you are you, you have been shortlisted or been considered for the job position so i hope you have learned something new today so just to uh, refresh so the steps that is uh, that would, that would be involved is first try to understand about what are all the various tools that are commonly used by data scientist on their job step 2 is uh, try to focus on the basic data science concepts understand about the uh, various basic concepts that would be used on the day to day job third one is try to build a portfolio for yourself you can make use of a platform such as tadel you can write your own blogs and you can use git repository to upload your scripts and then have a good portfolio for yourself and you need to focus on building your network try to expand your professional network and finally try to set up some alerts look for opportunities in your dream companies and be proactive to reach out to them and uh, uh, look out uh, ask if there is any vacant positions and uh, keep applying and uh, this should be very helpful for you to track into your first data science job i hope uh, this is helpful to you so if you have if you like what i have covered today please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and please don't forget to click on the notification icon to ensure that uh, Uh, my videos come to your inbox that's it for today and see you in next video bye until then